There are many DevOps myths circulating in the developer community lately, and this is not a surprise because of the huge popularity DevOps gained during the years, and especially in the latest period. Today, I'm going to debunk all those myths once and for all, so you can finally understand what really DevOps is about and how to do it properly. Let's get into it. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Coder Dave, where we talk about DevOps, especially with GitHub and Azure DevOps. Today, I want to bust some myth around DevOps. But before we do that, I want to thank Ade, or Aid, I'm not sure about the name, for being my new patron on Patreon. If, like him, you want to have access to exclusive content, live Q&A, live chat, and much more, check the options you have at patreon.com slash coderdave. But enough talking about this, let's talk DevOps. As you may know, the DevOps methodology can have significant benefits for organizations adopting it, as I discussed in this video, and you can find a link in the video description. But of course, to adopt it properly, you need to understand what it is in reality and not just for myths. And this is why I actually wanted to do this video today. But let's jump into the first myth and try to debunk it. Myth number one, DevOps is the same as CICD. Or to say it differently, if I do CICD, I do DevOps. This, I think, is one of the biggest misconceptions about DevOps, but unfortunately, there's a lot of people thinking that DevOps and CICD are actually the same thing. The truth is that while continuous integration and delivery are some key components, DevOps adoption focuses also on the culture and responsibility in a team. It emphasizes the need of everyone in the team to take part in each other's tasks. This improves collaboration and communication in the team. On the other hand, CICD enables this culture with software and tools that emphasize collaboration and um, automation. You can see CICD as a mean to an end, not as the end itself. Myth number two, DevOps is all about tools. This is fairly similar to what I just covered, and conversations around DevOps in organizations always turn into what tools organizations and teams are using, and often they turn also into philosophical conversation on what tool is the best and so on and so forth. Instead, we should focus more on the bigger picture, which is the business value DevOps can bring to an organization. Because DevOps means focusing on culture, mindset, and how individuals work together. Tools are important, but only after addressing people and processes. In fact, you should be choosing the tool that better adapts to your process and not vice versa. You should never change your processes based on what the tools can do. In fact, many studies have shown that the success factors of DevOps are all about culture or people, processes and tools. And tools always come last. Myth number three. I can use the same processes for all my projects and teams. And while this can be true in some contexts, it is usually not. You can and should reuse some processes, especially around people interactions and collaboration, but the more technical processes may change between different projects or even may need to be different. Let's talk, for example, about environments promotion. You may have a project that requires only two or three environments, let's say, for example, dev, test, and production, and have frequent deployments. But then maybe you have other projects that require more or less environments or stages for promotions, or that requires a more frequent or less frequent deployment. Another example could be around approvals. Maybe a project needs to go through different approvals at various stages, so your processes should account for that. But it is also possible that another project in your organization doesn't require the same approvals, or perhaps needs no approval at all. So different projects, different requirements and needs, different processes. Myth number four, I can do in my organization what the different Microsoft, Amazon, Google, or Netflix have done. Many world-famous organizations have adopted DevOps during the years, and they have done it with great success. So, of course, we look at them in awe and in admiration, but we do so trying to replicate their steps and without a context and without knowing all the steps that those companies have taken to be there where they are now. One thing is for sure, though, these organizations chose and built the tools and processes that work best for them at that time. This does not necessarily mean that we have to follow these organizations. Plus, what they have done won't magically work for our business either. You can of course look at them and you should look at those companies for inspiration and for see what they have achieved. But then you can and have to take those processes and tools and the people and the culture and adapt that to your organization, to your needs and do what is best for your business, not what other people do. This is what DevOps is about. As I've mentioned in the previous myth, 
different projects and teams require different processes. And of course, is even more evident between different organizations. Myth number five, I can create a DevOps team and then I'm done doing DevOps. This is something I see happening all the time, especially in enterprise clients. And given the amount of answers I got on my Twitter post, I'm not the only one. And by the way, follow me on Twitter if you're not doing it yet. Back to the myth, what I see happening all the time, especially in bigger organizations, is that they hire a bunch of DevOps engineers, they create a team that they call DevOps team, and then they think they are done. The problem there, of course, is that if you're not willing to change your culture, your processes, and perhaps also your tools, you will never succeed in DevOps because DevOps is all about collaboration. Every person and team in the organization should do DevOps. Barriers and silos need to be removed for this to work. Otherwise, you're just creating more silos when you create new DevOps teams. There is an exception to this though, and it's when the team is in charge to spread the DevOps knowledge and DevOps principle to the rest of the organization. Basically, a DevOps center of excellence. But still, that's not the uh, arrival point this is just the start. All right, we are now halfway through our journey in busting the DevOps myth. But before we continue to the next five myths, hit the like button below if you're enjoying this video or you find it insightful. This will help this video to be recommended to more viewers so they can benefit from it. And of course, that would mean a lot to me. Myth number six. If I do DevOps, I don't need any more DIT operations. If you think about it, of course, you already know the answer. Of course, you still need to perform the same tasks and operations that, as the name say, the IT operation team takes care of. But of course, adopting DevOps, responsibility will shift because in a well-adopted DevOps model, usually software engineers must also take care of deployments. Maybe they are not the one pressing the deploy button, but they are the one that should understand how the application is operated in production and the ones who have to create deployment procedures and scripts. Who better than them would know how to do it? Also, in many DevOps mature organizations, software engineers and developers share the on-call responsibilities and duties with operations to be able to solve quickly the live site incidents. In this scenario, IT operation duties shift more towards the care and maintenance of the live site. Things like scaling, optimization, etc. Myth number seven, automation removes all the bottlenecks. Automation is of course one of the biggest advantage and tools to be used in DevOps, but it's not a quick fix that will solve all of your problems. A well-implemented continuous delivery process allows team to deploy value and features quicker and quicker into production, and also to get the feedback they need as quick as possible from the deployed application. This, of course, means that you have to guarantee the quality of the product. In addition, you should take care of its proper operation and performance when scaling, for example. You also need to ensure smooth production deployment. Automating the CI and CD processes, as well as all the other manual processes you may have, does help in removing the bottlenecks, but it's not enough by itself. Because if all of your teams, like the development team, the operations team, the test team, and so on and so forth, if all of those teams don't work together as a single team, you will likely be introducing bottlenecks in other sides of the organization or in other processes. Myth number eight, DevOps requires Agile. In reality, DevOps and Agile can be complementary, but also competitive, or even not related at all. The notion of working with small incremental changes is common to both Agile and DevOps. However, organizations that embrace Agile are focused on optimization of the development end of the pipeline and may struggle with DevOps, which emphasize the optimization of the end-to-end -end processes. And it may seem strange, but in my career, I've also seen organizations succeeding with DevOps, even though they were not applying Agile at all they were in fact working with waterfall methodologies. It is quite rare, but it is possible. Myth number nine, DevOps applies only to web applications. This is simply not true because DevOps can apply to every kind of software development. It applies to databases. In fact, we have database DevOps, to backend, IoT, embedded software, even desktop software, and much more. In fact, the same principles can be applied and are applied also outside the software world like, for example, hardware development. Remember that the legacy of DevOps for how we know it right now comes from the factory floor optimization. The examples of DevOps that you can find around are mostly based on web applications or platform, but only because web development is one of the common, most common types of software development, and also because it is where you can see the effects of DevOps more quickly. But that doesn't mean that DevOps and its principles cannot be used in any other kind of software project or, as we've seen, 
any other projects at all. Okay, last myth for today, myth number 10. I have to apply DevOps in any application, project or service. The fact that you can do DevOps in basically any context doesn't mean that you have to. DevOps brings benefits in many circumstances, but in some cases you may not want or be able to afford the changes in the people, process and technology needed for DevOps. For example, applications that rarely change may not justify the cost of the DevOps adoption. In general, the guideline here is assess your current processes, culture and tools and see if it makes sense to change. Usually the answer is yes, but there may be instances in which the cost or the effort outweigh the benefits. If you have enough ROI, return on investment, which usually comes in the form of higher velocity, less time to market and higher quality, then go for it. All right, today we debunked 10 DevOps myths. Do you agree with my explanations and answers? Let me know in the comment section below and also let me know if you have more questions that you want answered. Also let me know if you like this new kind of style of video, you know that usually I do my videos in my uh, studio office, but today I decided to do it outside, so let me know if you like it and if you want to see more videos like this. And they most likely turn into philo philosophical. There are some projects or applications that probably will need you to be deployed, see, you need to be deployed. I will down continue, I will down. You will likely introduce more bottlenecks everywhere else because the cart is coming. Agile and Dev... So much wind. DevOps requires Agile. <laughs> they were working in water flows, water flows, even though they were not applying Agile at all. The the. Web development is one of the most frequent development software, what I'm saying. Huh? What do you think about my busting? <laughs> There's a butterfly. Hey, hey buddy. Check this video over here in which I go through all the benefits that DevOps brings to organizations. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coded Dave.